Good morning, I'm Cameron, to all our friends and visitors who share with us Sunday after Sunday. We're always blessed with your presence and humble that you are watching us um, via in our pre-recording. And I always want to remind to thank Brother Paul Baxter who records us week after week and, and stand by us and take care of the editings week after week. He's doing a great job and I just want to acknowledge that that without him, um, it would be a difficult task. Amen? This morning's scripture will be coming from Psalm 30, verses 1 through 12, and it reads, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endures but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor hast thou made my mountains to stand strong, and didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I have cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What a profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thee thanks unto thee forever. Let us pray. Dear Father, we come now again this morning. Thank you, Lord for once again taking care of us all through the week. Lord, you have been with families who have gone behind the hearse, and Lord and Father, you have been with families who have been on the bed of affliction. Now, Lord and Father, we know that a rise is going on in this sickness of coronavirus. And Lord, we know, dear Father, that the doctors and nurses are doing all they can do. And Lord, we ask, dear Father, that all those who are going through some suffering right now be with the doctors, the nurses, all those who got their hands on those who are sick and elderly. And Lord and the Father, we know that the Father, you are able to do all things. Bless them, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. Encourage your heart knowing they're in your hand. And Lord, whatever medication that they may be receiving right now, Lord, let it be used for your divine healing. That Lord and the Father, you are the only one who are the source of all healing. Now, Lord, take these words off these lips of clay. Let them fall on you that would hear that you may be edified, glorified, and magnified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Psalm 30, verse 5, For his anger endureth but for a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We'd like to use for a subject this morning, hold your head up, your joy is coming. Have you ever been upset? If you watched the news this week or read the paper this week, somewhere in your spirit, you have been upset. Do you know what it's like to get irritated because it seems that things just don't work out the way you want it to work out or the way you think it should have worked out sometime. The more you do, the more problems and challenges seem to work against you. You got a mind to do what needs to be done, but something or somebody always seems to get in your way, seems to upset you, annoy you, get under your skin, and just simply get on your last nerve, almost driving you to the point to where sometime you want to go back to some of your old ways. Can I give this for free? Satan is on a mission to ensure your complete and total destruction because he wants to see you fall down. And not only does Satan want to see you fall down, but Satan wants to make sure that you stay down. What you cannot do is stay down. You've got to hold your head up and remember that joy is coming. In this text, we see David. David is not unfamiliar to us. King David was a man who knew about holding his head up. We all remember the story about David when he was a teenager. His daddy didn't think too much of him. He put him with the sheep. He didn't look like his big and older brother. He wasn't real strong looking. He didn't look like he had much going on. And even though he was anointed king of Israel, his own father did not see the king in him. His own father, even though Samuel anointed him, he saw the oil fall on David. He knew that the presence of God was on David, but yet his dad did not have the confidence that he could be king, even though the prophet God called to anoint him was looking for the next king. It's bad enough to have the world against you. It's bad enough to have friends against you. But when your family, your flesh and blood, the father who rocked you in his arm as a baby, who provided for you, who have encouraged you to be the best you can be. When they turn against you, you know you got to hold your head up. Because it's not about your right nowness, it's about your future your destiny and your destination in God. It was this same David who in the name of the Lord stood up that mean, low down, arrogant, conceited Goliath, the champion of the Philistines. And he slew him in front of all the soldiers of Israel and before the Philistines. Because of his relationship with God, David recognized 
that to be successful and receive the blessing that God had promised, you can't quit, you can't give up, you just can't throw in the towel. You must have a mindset of David. David was a man after God's own heart. We find in this text three things. When holding your head up, you must remember. And the first thing you must remember is, remember to give God thanks. Verse 4 says, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. I have found out in my lifetime that we have spent too much time focusing on bad things or how bad things seem to be. That we don't spend enough time thanking God for what he's already done for us. We used to say God is good all the time, all the time God is good. And some folk still say that, that's their greeting. How you doing? God is good all the time. God is good. But one day I said that to Mother Mary Oliver. I said, Mother Oliver, God is good. And she reminded me of something by saying, no, Pastor, God passed being good a long time ago. He has been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And we have to agree with that statement because if it had not been for his grace and his mercy, we would keep falling down over and over and over and die. If it had not been for his grace and mercy, we could have been hit by a car or a truck just this week, just this moment, on our way to our everyday, days from bed and bed from every job. Something could have happened to us. But by his grace and his mercy, he woke you up to a brand new day. By his grace and mercy, he gave you another opportunity to praise his name. If it had not been for his grace and mercy, we could have been struck down walking across the street. Yes, the Lord is better than good to us and way more than enough. When it comes to thanking God, I believe that we should not only thank Him because of what He's done, but we ought to thank Him because of who He is. It's based upon our individual personal relationship with God that causes us to give Him the praise and the glory that He's due. The Bible says in this text, we should remember His holiness. God is holy, and with His holiness and with His spiritual blessing, instruct us. Leviticus 11.44 says, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. Why? For I am holy. The second reason that the Bible gives us when holding your head up, you've got to remember that joy is coming. Verse 5 says, For his anger endureth but for a moment, and his favor is light. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It's important to know that God's days begins with and evening, and the day ends with a morning. I'm saying it again. It's important that we remember that God's day begins with an evening and ends with a morning. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 5 and 8, he reminds us, and God called the night day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 8 tells us again, and God called
call the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. There's a difference in being happy and having joy in your life. The Hebrew word for joy in this text is pronounced renah. It means rejoicing, gladness, joy, shouting, and being triumphant. There are things that can make you happy. Homes, cars, that stuff can make you happy. Money and jewelry, that can make you happy. Places you visit can make you happy. Just having folk around you make you laugh and, and make you smile can make you happy. The problem is those things only last for a little while. They make you happy, but they can't really give you joy. If those things are near and dear to your heart, if something happened to them, they can even make you cry. You can lose your home, your car, and you may cry. You can lose your house or jewelry, and you may just cry. Folk that's been around you can let you down and make you cry. But don't get too upset about your crying. Can I give you some free? I've learned that crying is a way to release the pain and sorrow of a particular thing or situation which position, possessions you to receive. When you let go of things, you're now ready to receive better things. When possession bring you sorrow, when stuff bring you sorrow because you've lost them, since God is in the process, you better get ready to receive better things. David lets us know that life will present you with things that may cause you to have trouble, headaches, pains, discomfort, but David says you just hold your head up. And the reason why you need to hold your head up is because joy will give you power. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, the Bible says, for joy, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We have got to know for ourselves that the joy for ourselves, the source of our joy comes from Jesus. We read in his words, he said in John 15 11, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. He wants to be mindful that he gives us everything we need, and this joy that we have strengthens us, even when it seems like our hope is gone. And the third thing he teaches us to remember to hold your head up, is because God will keep you solid. If you remember that God will keep you solid, he said in verse 6, And in my prosperity, I said I shall never be moved. David makes a statement that should give all of us this morning some confidence and something to look forward to. He said, In my prosperity, I said, I should never be moved. Satan is always looking to knock you down and keep you unsteady. But the assurance from the Lord is that you shall not be moved. We used to sing that song, I shall not. I shall not be moved. I shall not. I shall not be moved. Just like the tree 
that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. God has the power to keep you from falling even when the odds are stacked up against you. God will be your rock in a weary land because you're the rock of our salvation. God will be your shelter in the time of storm when things get hard. God will keep you solid. What we can't do is allow ourselves to be so consumed by our situation, by our circumstances, by our problem, and take our eyes off of the one who has the power over every situation, over every circumstance, over every condition. Right now, you may be hurrying through the night of your experience. Right now, the night might be, the night through which you are passing is only temporary. It might be rough right now, but your joy is coming. It might be hard right now, but remember, your joy is coming. It might look like there's no hope, there's no tomorrow, but your joy is coming. It might look like you have no peace, but your joy is coming. And this joy I'm talking about is, Je is Jesus Christ. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, Mary's baby. Jesus Christ, Lazarus doctor in the graveyard. Jesus Christ, Joe's horse pawing in the valley. Jesus Christ, Ezekiel wheel turning in the middle of a wheel. The same one who bumps into himself because he's from everlasting to everlasting. The same one who is the great I am. The same one who is the author and finisher of our faith. The one who's the bright and the morning star, the same one who the Son of Man, the same one who the King of King and Lords of Lords, the same one who died on Calvary's Hill. But Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And just knowing that Jesus has all power in his hand, that gives me joy. It gives me joy to shout, joy to sing when I look back over my life and see how good God been to me. I have to shout and praise his name. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy I have. The world can't take it away. Hold your head up. Your joy. You might be knocked down, but your joy. You might be criticized. Your joy. You might be being pushed aside, but your joy is coming. Just hold your head up. God will bless you. God keep you is our prayer to meet again.